This is going to be how to do DCD 651 Cottage Patio Garden. It's one of our die cut decoupage series. This is it made up. As you see, it makes quite a lovely design. Quite 3D. This is the, sh the design itself and you'll see that it's a die cut design so it presses from the sheet to use and you'll find that they're all numbered so you've got layer 1, then layer 2, 3, 4 and so on. So they're all easy to assemble just in order as they come. Now for the background layer I like to use a craft knife. If you insert it into the groove you can then slice down between the background and the design and it cuts through, it's held into place by little pieces of paper and this just cuts through them. Now you can press it from the sheet quite easily like that and it, but it does leave you with these little tiny bits of white and you can easily then once you've pressed it from the sheet you can rub them down like that you can use a pair of scissors and just snip them off like that or a craft knife and a ruler to slice them off so your base layer will always be layer 1 and then when we look at layer 2 on this design we have layer 2A and layer 2 and you'll find that usually you need to put layer 2A before layer 2 because it has other pieces that are going to be um, covered by it's going to be covered by the next layer so once I've pressed these from the sheet I will usually cut off these little white pieces on every layer That's not something you're going to want to watch me do over and over again, so I'll do that a bit off camera. Now you've seen how it's done, you won't need to see it again really. You do need to be a little bit careful when you're taking these from the sheet because you don't want to tear them. Some of the more intricate pieces are quite tricksy sometimes to get out. If you miss one you can always do it afterwards. Generally find once you're just putting it in place you suddenly find the odd one. There you are. So we're going to start with layer 2A and these are my sticky fixer pads. These are a 3mm square by 2mm deep and this little piece of roof will put sticky fixers on the bottom edge but not on the top. The reason is we want the roof to slope downwards. So we'll pop it on. We we'll pop it in place like that. And then I'm going to put a piece of glue under the top here. For this I use PVA adhesive. And if I've got some spare space on my sticky fixer backing sheet. I put a piece of a little puddle of glue on here. If you don't have a piece of spare backing you can easily use plain paper. And then we need a piece of scrap paper. This is just taken from the backing, the waste on my decoupage sheet. And then place some glue underneath the area we want to stick down and press.
it needs a moment or so for the glue to dry. Sometimes that pings back up. All I do with that means the glue is a bit wet. So as we're working, we can press it down until the glue dries. The chimney stack we want to give a bit a bit of shape to. It's a square chimney, and at the moment it looks flat. So I cut between the roof and the chimney, and then down to the painted corner. Then I can use a pair of tweezers. If you place it on the straight edge that you want to fold along, you can then bend, and that's given you a nice shape to the chimney. Again, we want a slope on this roof, so we're going to place a sticky fixer on the chimney. I want a single layer of these along the top edge. We want a slope in this large roof. We're avoiding the corner because we don't want a bulky corner. And then at the bottom edge, I'm going to stack my pads too tall. So just one on top of the other. And then we're going to place it into the corner, line up the chimney, and press into place. And then in a similar way to the, the, the small roof, we have a nice slope to our roof now. And then this corner here, we're going to do the gluing for again. So a little glue on the paper again, and a smear. So here we have our made up design, and this is layer 3 and 3A. The lamp post is 3A. For the lamp post, we're going to put a sticky fixer on the top here, and then we're going to put another at the bottom of the stick in these red flowers. When we have a piece like this that's overlapped by the next piece, we try to give you a little bit extra, so you can see we've got the little bit of red flower, which will be covered by the next piece of the layer. So to give the lamp post some shape, we're going to put the tweezers along the line and then fold and then we've got a nice shaped top of the lamp post and we can place the top first because that's the important part and then down to our sticky pad in the red flowers and that supports the stem the post nicely so we don't have to cut small pads to put in. For, for this next piece I've done the white bits around the bottom and the sides. Any white bits on the top I take off while I'm doing this next part and we want to cut into some of these flowers to give them a little bit of movement, a bit of life. Flowers in the natural world wouldn't be all on one plane and if we leave these alone that's exactly what they would look like. We'll do a little into the pink 
they're very small but a little bit of work on those will help. Just bringing a couple of flowers forwards and pushing a couple more back and it's just that little bit there that makes quite a bit of difference in the end. If you put it on the sheet just as it is, it does look nice. This just helps it look a little bit more special. And then the spikes of flowers, I like to cut down between them because in that very act of cutting them, it actually twists them up and down a little bit and it gives them a little bit of life. And then a couple around the edge of the white. We've got more of this white to come, so we don't need to work too hard at it. something along those lines. Now you'll note that this layer is quite short, it's cut off at the bottom. That's because there's plenty more to come, more layers to come on top of it. So we don't need to have all of the layer there. And I'll place my sticky fixers close to the top edge. Not where we've cut, we want to keep the sticky pads out of the cut area or all of the cutting and shaping we put in will be squashed back out again. Flattened back out. Now for this layer, I don't put any pads along the bottom because we actually want that to fall down to the previous layer. And the thing to take careful note of on this design is the chair. I've done it before now and you get to the end and you've not gone far enough down on the chair and your next layer doesn't fit properly. So we're, we're making sure the flowers line up at the top but we also want to make sure that the chair is right, that it just joins neatly there. If it's in the wrong place, the wall goes too high and then when you try to put the next layer on, it misses at the bottom. I found that out the hard way. So now we want to add a little bit of glue along the bottom edge. A bit like that. And press it down. The reason for gluing the bottom edge is it helps pop the tops of the flowers th forwards. It will press down with the next layer anyway, but I like to give it a little glue for that very reason. There we are. So now we're going to move on to layer four. These are the parts for our layer four. We have four A, the rose bush, and then the other two pieces. We'll start with 4A which is a rose bush. For this, in a similar way, we need to place a sticky fixer into this pink flower because the stem goes beyond the end of the... into the, that bush and it will be covered by the next layer. Then we're going to, to give the flowers a bit of a trim and shape. So really just introducing a bit of variance to the edges of the whole whole rose bush. Allowing some bits to be 
lower than others. You can highlight the flowers a little bit this way as well. The blooms in real life would generally be a bit more forward than the leaves. There we are. And we'll have just a couple of pads on the back of the head of the flower. We put a couple on because we don't want it to rock about. A little bit of a curve. Similar for this pink rose, we're going just a little bit of movement, it is quite small, I think it still looks nicer with it than without. If you find it too fiddly, leave this bit out. Oops. just a little and we'll pop because I've curved the edges down quite a bit I'm not doing a pad right to the very edges and then we have to decide which way up it goes and give the edges a bend down Then the main layer, we're going to give a bit of a movement to the hydrangea again, if we come in from the sides as well as the top. It's like added value layers, layers without a whole layer really. These red flowers are on the next layer so we'll deal with those next time and we're going to go down between these spikes again, push the green bit to the back. I know we did the spikes last time but if you do it on each successive layer it kind of builds fullness to the bunch. Probably clump I meant there didn't I? And the top edge of this pink potted flower needs a little bit. The main body of that's on the next layer, but for this layer, if we just do the top, it will add some detail. And then again with the spikes. Going to press that little bit of wall back a tiny touch. Yeah. And again, sticky fixers just along the top edge because we're going to glue the bottom edge. Keeping the pads in a little from the cut edge so we don't flatten out the cutting and shaping.
it does slope quite nicely now because of the shaping we put into the first one but I would still add glue along the bottom I think I need a new piece of scrap here we are so then we can move on to layer 5. So here's our layer 5. It's really just a simple part of the garden. This is the last piece that has the patio on. So we've ignored the patio part down here, but this time we'll need to build up the front. And similarly to previous layers, we're going to come in on the hydrangea a little. It's surprising what a tiny little bit of shape like that can add to it. I'm going to start some separation between the red flowers and the hydrangea here. I'm going to come down between the stones on the wall. We can then just add a little twist to each stone and it starts to give it the look of a shaped stone instead of a flat piece of slate I guess rock a very little piece is needed on the top of this Again, the rest of this is on the next layer, so it's highlighting just a couple of little pieces around the top edge. Just a little between the flower and the spike there. We're going to go along the top edge as we have been with the pads. This is the part where the hydrangea meets the red flowers. So we put a pad on the back of the hydrangea but we won't on the back of the red flowers because we want that to sink down a little. And now we're going to go to the actual design here. You could use bigger pads for this, but I find it's simpler to just stick with the same ones. It saves hunting for your bigger sheets. Mine have a habit of hiding. So it's something like that, a couple in the centre for a little bit of support. So there you can start to see how we get a lovely 
ranged garden without too much fatness at the bottom here. They're a little bit sunken down at the moment, but they will perk up with the next couple of layers. So now we're going to go on to layer six. Our layer six consists of these three parts, and we'll start with the potted plant. I like to remove the pot from this and then we'll work with just the pot. It's a bit tiny. If you don't want to do this part, leave it attached. And then I remove the pad. If I put it on a piece of scrap, usually you've got a bit of space, but I've just started a new sheet. And then I place a knife on top and if you press down like that, you might hear the pop and then the two sides will spring back up again and then you know you've managed to get all the way through. And we'll pop it on the pot. I was going to put it on the back but he didn't really want to. So we've got a nice curve to the pot and we pop it in place like that. Going to give it a little bit more of a squeeze. There we go. And then for the rest of the flat the plant, we'll give it some shape like we have previously. It might seem a bit repetitive this, but each piece we're doing is another part of the plant. It's not really the same plant, bit of plant over and over. If you do, do it without cutting between them, it will still look good, but I think this adds just a little bit extra. Because we've removed the pot, we can also give it a little bit of shape along the bottom here. We want the centre leaves to be able to come out, so don't push these ones down. We want them to be beyond the pot. So we're going to add one at the centre here to lift it nice and high above the pot. And then a couple behind the blooms. A couple again to save it rocking. If you put on, on just one, the top of the flower can go a bit rocky. Then we'll pop it in place. Something like that. There we go. We have this little piece for the bottom corner here. It would fit in place just like it is, but no surprise, I like to give the flowers a little bit of movement. I'm going in a little deeper there because we can then kind of lift it like a whole clump forward a little. Instead of just a couple of flowers, we've got the whole clump looking like it's in front. We 
There's not really a right and wrong about this. It's however you feel at the time. And this is to give you the general idea on what we're trying to achieve. So we want a pad right down in the corner. And then one near the top. For the other bits we're going to do it onto the back of this. This is where we cut it to get, make this clump look like it's a bit forward so we'll pop one there. And then another near the top. That one might actually be quite close to that one. And then the main part of this layer, we need to come down between the hydrangea and the red flowers. And then between the red flowers themselves, like we did on the, the spikes earlier, this gives it a little bit of movement so that they're not all on the same plain. And we'll come in on the hydrangea again. At the bottom of the chair leg here, we're going to come down just a little between the flowers and then we can push this piece back and help lift the chair leg from the flowers. There will be another layer as well, but it just begins the separation really. And for this we start in the corner again. And go out to those flowers. Then we're going on the table. I'm going to avoid the legs for the moment. I'll take it down as low as I can without cutting the pads and then when we put the next layer on we'll see what needs pads under here and what doesn't. Then we're going, this is the bottom of the red flowers. We want to stay away from the side here because we want the hydrangea to be lifted from the red. and then in from the top edge a little so we don't flatten our cuts. Now, some of these the legs of the table I like to just drape down and some I like to put a pad on 
and I think we'll glue this one and then the others will leave. They're fairly strong as they are. My glue's dried up. And I treated myself to a new scrap. It's one thing with when you're doing decoupage, you've always got a bit of scrap paper lying about. There we go. So you can see we've got the separation between the red and the hydrangea that we were looking for. And I can lift a couple of these to add a bit more life to them. Okay, so now we want layer 7. So our layer 7 comes as two parts and we're going to start with the um, chair. The table goes over the edge of the chair here. So we start with this one. I'm going to cut off the flowers. The reason for that is I can lift the flowers above the chair leg better like that. And this is the arm of the chair and it would come forwards. So I'm going to place the tweezers on there and give it a fold. That's too much of a fold, I know, but it will flatten down when I put it on. We can, I can decide then how much of a, a lift I want it to have. So we'll pop one there. We want to lift the back of the chair away to give it the lift from the bush behind it. So we'll go along the top of the chair like that. And then into the chair leg like that. I'm going to give a bit of a shape to the chair leg. as. I would expect it to be shaped in life. I would expect that bit to be a little bit forwards. So a little like that. So this chair leg we want to go downwards and be covered by the um, flowers here but we want a little bit of a lift on here and so my piece of pad that we cut earlier left over from last time we used a half pad pop it on there there we go Now this will go down when we put the ch the flowers and table over it, so I shan't worry about it yet. The few flowers that we cut from the corner add a little bit of shape inside. It's a bit small to get much in, but a little bit will help. And then pad in the corner. And we might go a pad at the top. So you can see the point of lifting is it just makes the flowers look a little bit in front of the rest. And then the table. We're going to give the table a shape like that because this edge needs to mat tie up with the leg here. And then a little bit of a shape to each leg. I'm going to cut down between the vase and the table 
and then I can actually fold the edge of the bend rather than fold, we don't want to crease, crease. And that makes the table look more like it's receding into the distance instead of all forwards. And we'll try the same around the cup, just down to the widest point of the saucer. And give that a bend down. And then it looks more like a flat tabletop. than a plaque on a wall I think. So we want a pad on the vase, a pad on the flowers, and then one on the table leg here. And I think we might go for a half once we've got it in place. Instead of a pad, I'm going to put some glue between these two table, the, yes, table legs, like that and that. And then if we use the tweezers, we can squeeze the two table legs together like that. And that gives you a stiffer leg that will stay in place. There we go. And it doesn't actually need a pad. I find sometimes when the pads are on thin bits, I don't like the look of it, and that gets over that problem. I think that looks quite good. And then all we have left is layer 8, which is the hat and the bits on the table. I actually like what I've done with the vase and I don't know that I actually want to put another vase on. I think it's got enough separation there without any more. So I'll remove the vase. For the oops, for the cup, I'm going to give it a side-to-side -side curve. And then in the same way as I did with the table. I'm going to cut down the side and flatten the saucer. That way we've given a shape to it. We've made the cup stand clear of the saucer. And I don't actually want the thickness of a pad, so I'm going to dip each side of the saucer. Whoops, you can't see that, sorry. I'm going to dip each side of the saucer into the glue, like that, and then pop it on just with the glue. So the shape that I've given the cup itself is holding it proud of the table. And once the glue dries, once we've got it in the right place, there we go. Once the glue dries, it will just be slightly raised and not look too prominent. It just look like it's there, really. I'll have to keep an eye on that because it's going to twist. Don't want the tea spilling, do we? And then I'm going to remove the vase altogether. A bit of a downward side to side on it, these flowers. And then a bit of shaping between each one.
So I'm going to be like that. And I think we'll go for just one pad this time. It's not much space for more. And pop them into the vase. Okay, fill the hat. An overall shape. Get rid of our little whites. Now we want to cut the body of the hat and the brim of the hat need a different curve. So I'm going to go along between the two there and then we can curve the br the body of the hat and then the brim and it just gives it the lift here I'm going to go with one pad towards the front the front's really the bit we want to lift from the chair and then I'm going to touch it to the glue like we did for the teacup And then that little piece, once the glue dries, will stay there and give it a nice shape. Hopefully you agree, that looks really quite nice. So this is the card I've made from the design we've just done. And there's one other thing I like to do. I like to sometimes put a bow on the hat. Now this can be quite fiddly. So for this I tie a bow at an easy size. Pay attention to make sure you don't have a twist in the bow loops like that. So we've got two nice flat loops, way too big. If you pull the knot tight then pull the ends of the loops, the bow tail, sorry, like that. Then you can make a small bow and you can adjust it to a smaller size. You will have to tighten the knot again. So you can get a nice tiny little bow. I'm going to adjust my loops a little. tweezers and if we measure it up it's still a little large for the hat so we go a little smaller too so really by tightening and um, pulling on the bow tails you can get a bow to a reasonable size I'm going to leave a bit of a tail so cut off the spear Take the other one to about the same size. And then we'll try it on the hat. It doesn't look too out of place, does it? So now we're going to put a little bit of glue onto the paper like that. So we put a little bit of Yoohoo on there and press it to the hat. And if we take the bow tail, we can twist it to give it some nice curves. And then when where we want it to touch We glue it in a couple of places, it glues the curves in and then the end here. I use Yoohoo for this because it dries quite quickly and it's not something you're going to want to be holding on to for a long time.
a little bit of glue near the end. And then I think we can add a little bit more there. Something like that. And there you are.